today's video, I'm gonna be going over some of the common questions I see in regards to whole home solar systems with battery storage. Now this video is gonna to pertain to those who want a whole home system like mine, where you're not looking to sell back to the grid necessarily, though a lot of this will still apply, but I'm looking for those people who want a whole home system to be able to remain as independent from the electric grid as possible or independent from the grid altogether. So let's get right to it. Question number one. Is it even possible to have a whole home solar system that powers all of your appliances, including those big air conditioners, for your home? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. This isn't 10 years ago where we didn't have real efficient air conditioning units and we didn't have inverters that could even handle the surge and startup of those larger four ton, five ton air conditioner compressors. And now there's energy efficient appliances you can swap out in your house for instance, what I did is I don't use my big traditional four ton air conditioner anymore. Well, I do sometimes when I have just an abundance of solar power coming in and I just want to get my house into the mid 60s when it's 100 degrees outside. But besides that, I don't run it because heat pump air conditioners and heaters now are a lot more efficient than those big traditional units that we all have on our homes here in the US. There's also heat pump water heaters now. So you're not using those big giant 4,500 watts you know, heating elements inside those electric water heaters. Now I'm using more like four to 500 watts to heat water at a time. So that really lowers the big load on my solar inverter. And I also even have a heat pump washer and dryer combo that's also very efficient instead of using those big 5,000 watt heating element electric dryers. So you can also use these appliances to help keep your energy, your continuous watt usage way low below those max requirements that these inverters have. So again, the answer is yes, you can absolutely run your entire house, your entire electric home panel on a solar system with battery storage. Now, depending on your budget, you can really expand your batteries and have a lot of power to basically ride out those long two, three, four, five day storms that you're not gonna have much solar production coming in. And then question number two, how big of a system do I need in regards to how many solar panels or how much battery storage? Now that is a tough question to answer because everybody's electrical usage is different. It depends on how big your home is, how much electricity you're using per kilowatt hours per day. Now, instead of just giving you the answer of, I don't know, I don't know your electrical usage, I'm gonna give you my usage and then you can kind of compare yours to what I'm using and if it's probably gonna be very similar as my guess. So I have a 2000 square foot home and I use about anywhere from 40 to 70 kilowatt hours a day. Now the difference you see there is basically what's the temperature outside. If it's really hot, I'm gonna use closer to that 70. And if it's really cold, I'm gonna use closer to that 70 as well because again, I'm using electricity to try and heat my home. So it's when it's down in the 40, 40, 45 kilowatt hour range, it's because the weather's pretty mild. Now I have a 19 kilowatt solar array which is actually pretty large uh, for my size house. I'm pretty sure I could get away with a 15 kilowatt solar array, but when it comes to like cloudy weather, I mean, you're gonna like the extra amount of solar panels that you can get. But most houses, you can't get more than a 10 kilowatt array on the roof anyway. So it really depends on how much use or how much space you have. I have 15 acres out here on my property, so I can put as many solar panels as I want out here. Your situation may be different. Now, I also have a 30 kilowatt hour battery storage bank. Now, in the whole scheme of things, that's not a ton of battery storage, but it is enough for me to last overnight without an issue until the sun comes up the next day. Now, I am very careful on my usage at night, though. I really run the air conditioning, the heating, my washer and dryer, I do all that and I really heat up the house or cool the house when it's sunny, when I have solar production. I also try to do laundry when the sun is out. And then when the sun goes down, I turn down that either the heater or the air conditioning to where I'm not using very much power at all in that respect. And it's really just for lights, TV, internet router, cooking, things like that. And even with that 30 kilowatt hour battery bank, I am off grid or I'm not using grid power at all, probably about 90% of the time. And the other 10% is when there's, you know, the bigger storms, when it's really heavy clouds for multiple days at a time, then I go back to grid for just a little bit. And even on those cloudy days, I still have enough power to get a little bit of a charge on my battery bank. Again, that's where my 19 kilowatt solar array really comes in handy. 
Really, it's those rainy days and the really hot days when you're really having to push those air conditioners when I have to go back to grid for a little bit. Now, if you'd like to see a wiring schematic of my whole system that I have that I recommend, including links to all the equipment, all the parts I use for the install, you can download that wiring schematic and equipment list for free by going to flexboss21.com. And the Flexboss 21 inverter from EG4 is the one you see right behind me right here. That is the one I recommend and I have that PDF or that wiring schematic for. So you can download that for free. So question number three, of course, how much does a system like mine cost? So if you shop at the right places and the places that I recommend, for a system about my size, you're looking at right around 15 to $25,000. Now that is for equipment only. If you actually had somebody install that for you, at least installing the whole system, you're looking at about double that. Now there's videos online, there's videos on my channel, all over the place showing you how to do most of this install yourself. You can dig the trench for the conduit, for the solar panel wiring. You can mount your solar panels yourself. None of that is that dangerous. Now, when it comes to the final electrical connections, that's where you may wanna hire out for an electrician or for a licensed solar installer to help you there because that's where you can get hurt if you don't know what you're doing. Now, a lot of solar installers or electricians won't wanna touch that. They'll wanna install your entire system for you. So you might have to shop around for that or check out some of those solar stores, online stores that I recommend, and I'll have links to those in the description of this video, and you can ask them about a local installer in your area who's a little bit more flexible. Now, question number four, is it worth it spending that much money on a solar system with battery storage? Now, for me, the answer for me was absolutely yes. And I bought my system years ago, and prices right now are about 30% cheaper than what I paid for my system. And at least as of right now, you can still get that 30% federal tax credit as well, which really brings down the cost of that system. But if you are gonna use that solar tax credit, keep your receipts because it's very easy to commit fraud with the solar tax credit. So your odds of getting audited by the IRS are gonna go up dramatically if you are claiming that tax credit. And you can even use that tax credit for, for systems that you install yourself on your primary residence. There's a lot of debate out there whether you can or whether you can't. You can. I have done it myself and I have claimed that tax credit. Now I am not a CPA, so check with your tax advisor, obviously, but my experience is, yes, you can. Now I lived through the snow apocalypse here in Texas where the power grid almost failed completely for a long period of time. We were all out of power for like three to five to seven days, some people even longer. I lived through that and saw what it's like to live in zero degree temperature without any electricity and it is not fun. So that really is what kicked me into high gear to get to work to install a system like I have today. So I see the benefit of it from personal experience. So I am really glad I did that and I am prepared for any grid outage now for as long as it takes. Now, if you do the installation of your system yourself, you're looking for a payback period, like how long is it gonna take for you to recover your money based on electricity bill savings? It's probably gonna be in the realm of about five to seven years. Obviously, if you pay for somebody to do the whole system, now you're looking at double that. So I would recommend doing as much of the install as you can. And look on YouTube. There's all kinds of videos out there to teach you how to wire solar panels in series, how to do a series parallel connection, how to wire inverters, all of that. Look at my schematic. Again, go to flexboss21.com. That should help a lot as well. Now, as I said, a five to seven year payback period. Now that's if electricity prices stay the same. That's if we have no inflation going forward at all. And we all know electricity prices only go one way and that is higher. So odds are your payback period is gonna be even lower than that five to seven years, especially if in your high electricity cost state like California or New York. And question number five, is permitting your system actually required? Almost always now the question is yes, unless you're in a real rural area, in a county area where the counties are so tiny, they don't even wanna take the time to even look at it. That's how I was originally when I first put my system in. Things have changed in my county since though. Now they do require a permit. And even if you don't sell back to the grid, your county or your city and your power company especially still wants to take a look at your system and make sure it is safe to operate. Now how difficult that process is gonna be <laughs> depends on which state you're in, which county you're in, which city you're in. So it's really hard to know. But if you're in more of like a county area, it's typically easier for you. Now, if you're within city limits, it's gonna be more difficult. There's gonna be more red tape to jump through. There always is in cities. And if you're in a big city like Los Angeles, you're going to go through a big headache. They are going to put you through the ringer on this. And it's just the way it is. It's just what we have to deal with. You'll be able to get through it, but just know you're gonna be pulling your hair out and you're gonna to have to go back and forth to them 
many times before they finally give you that final sign off. And then question number six, how long is my system going to last? Now that depends on what kind of equipment you're installing with your system. Now for my system, or this system right here, the FlexBoss 21 inverter, it has a 10 year warranty, so I'm fully expecting it to last even longer than that, probably around 15 years. Solar panels these days typically have between a 25 and 30 year warranty. And the batteries I use, like the EG4 indoor wall mount battery, those also have a warranty of 10 years with like 8,000 cycles in them that still maintain that 80% depth of discharge. So I am expecting my system to last 15 years. And obviously at a five to seven year payback period, this system's gonna pay for itself almost two times over. So for me, the financial benefit is worth it. And even more important to me is to have power when nobody else does, when there's major storms. That to me is priceless. Question number seven, do you feel your standard of living has gone down because you're trying to remain off grid or not using grid power? And the answer to that question is not at all. I actually feel like my standard of living has gone up because when the sun is out, I have so much power I run my air condition, like I said, into the mid 60s inside my house and it's 100 degrees outside. So I feel like my standard of living has actually gone up. Now it's true when it comes to being like at night, I back off a little bit. I try to make sure I'm using the heavier appliances when the sun is out, especially like the clothes dryer, washing and drying. So I wouldn't say my standard of living went down because of that. It just changes when I'm doing things. So how I do it is I'll cool my house as much as I can during the day and at night I back off on those air conditionings and let the house slowly go from let's say 66, 67 degrees and go up to about 74 degrees before I'll consider turning it back on for a little while to try to keep the house cool. And when my batteries are fully charged during the day and I've got excess solar, I'll crank my water heater up from 120 degrees to 140 degrees and then that'll make that hot water last even longer for multiple showers or baths overnight. Now, the good thing is all these appliances now have apps. I can do all of this from my phone. I can change my air conditioning temperature. I can change the water temp in my water heater just with a click of a button as long as I have an internet connection in my phone. Well, that's it for now. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I will take a look at those. And if I have enough of them, there's enough overlapping there. I will go ahead and make a follow up video to this one answering those questions. And as a reminder, make sure to download my free wiring schematic with links to all the equipment on how I did the install, go to flexboss21.com and you can download that for free. And by downloading that, you'll also end up on my email list, which I send out emails periodically, and you can reply directly to those emails. It'll come right to me if you have any questions. Well, I can't guarantee to get back to all of you as the volume of emails is growing on my channel, I will do my best. Thank you all for the kind comments and emails I've received saying that I've helped you out with your system and gave you the confidence to go ahead and pursue this. That really helps keep me going here. All right, everyone. We'll see you all in the next video.